Hello, this is the service for September 19th, 2021, which I believe is, what, the 17th? Yes, the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. So we will begin with hymn 605, Father Welcomes All His Children. Father welcomes all his children to his family through his Son. Father giving his salvation, life forever has been won. Little children, come to me, for my kingdom is of these. Life and love I have to give, mercy for your sin. Father welcomes all his children to his family through his Son. Father giving his salvation, life forever has been won. Little in the water, in the word, in his promise be assured. Those who are baptized and believe shall be born again. Father welcomes all his children to his family through his Son. Father giving his salvation, life forever has been won. Let us daily die to sin, let us daily rise with him. Walk in the love of Christ our Lord, live in the peace of God. Father welcomes all his children to his family through his Son. Father giving his salvation, life forever has been won. Our service is service setting 5, found on page 213. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God, us, God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 54. It serves as the basis of our sermon. O God, save me by your name and vindicate me by your might. O God, hear my prayer. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen against me, ruthless men seek my life. They do not set God before themselves. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. He will return the evil to my enemies. In your faithfulness, put an end to them. 
With a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good. For he has delivered me from every trouble, and my eye has looked in triumph on my enemies. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We sing the Kyrie on page 944. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie Our hymn of praise is hymn 454, Sing My Tongue, The Glorious Battle. Sing my tongue, the glorious battle, Sing the ending of the fray. Now above the cross the trophy, Sound the loud triumphant lay. Tell how Christ the world's Redeemer has a victim won the day. Tell how when at length the fullness of the appointed time was come, he the Word was born of woman, left for us his Father's home. Blaze the path of true obedience, shown as light amidst the gloom. Thus with thirty years accomplished, he went forth from Nazareth, destined, dedicated, willing, did his work, and met his death. Like a lamb he humbly yielded on the cross his dying breath. Faithful crew, cross, true sign of triumph, be for all the noblest tree. None in foliage, none in blossom, none in fruit thine equal be. Symbol of the world's redemption, for the weight that hung on thee. Unto God be praise and glory, to the Father and the Son, to the eternal Spirit, honor, now and evermore be done. Praise and glory in the highest, while the timeless ages run. Let us pray. O God, whose strength is made perfect in weakness, grant us humility and childlike faith, that we may please you in both will and deed, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for today comes from the 17th uh, Sunday after Pentecost, comes from Jeremiah chapter 11. The Lord made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, 
I did not know it was against me. They devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the fruit with its the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living. Let his name be remembered no more. But, O Lord of hosts, who judges righteously, who tests the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. The Lord be with you. I'm sorry. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle is from James chapter 3. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have better jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says, He yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us, but he gives more grace. Therefore it said, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself before the Lord, and he will exalt you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our hymn of the day is hymn 851. Lord of glory, you have bought us. Lord of glory, you have bought us with your life blood as the price, never grudging for the lost ones that tremendous sacrifice, and with that have freely given blessings countless as the sand. To the unthankful and the evil, with your own unsparing hand. Grant us, our hearts, dear Lord, to give you gladly, freely of your own, with the sunshine of your goodness, melt our thankless hearts of stone, till our cold and selfish natures, warm by you, at length believe that more happy and more blessed tis to give than to receive. Wondrous honor you have given to our humblest charity. In your own mysterious sentence, you have done it all to me. Can it be, O oh gracious Master, that you deign 
for alms to sue, saying by your poor and needy, give as I have given to you. Lord of glory, you have bought us with your life blood as the price, never grudging for the lost ones that tremendous sacrifice. Give us faith to trust you boldly, hope to stay our souls on you. But, O oh best of all your graces, with your love, our love renew. The Holy Gospel for today comes from Mark chapter 9. The disciples went on from there and passed through Galilee, and Jesus did not know anyone, did not want anyone to know. For he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and when he is killed, after three days he will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve, and he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last of all, and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in the midst of them, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. This is the gospel of our Lord. We continue by singing the creed, and we all believe in one true God, hymn 953. We all believe in one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, ever present help in need, praise by all the heavenly host. All he made his love in folds, all creation he upholds. We all believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Mary's Son, who descended from his throne and for our salvation won. By whose cross and death are we rescued from all misery. We all confess the Holy Ghost, who from both in truth proceeds, who sustains and comforts us in all trials, fears, and needs. Blessed Holy Trinity, praise forever be to thee. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. O God, save me by your name, and vindicate me by your might. This is what King David wrote before he became King David in reaction to three great betrayals. A betrayal by Saul, where Saul sought his death despite King David having served the kingdom and continuing to serve the kingdom in a great and wonderful manner. A betrayal by a man who watched as the priests of the tabernacle gave food to David and his 600 men as they fled from the army of Saul. And that man betrayed the priests to Saul, who slaughtered those priests, except one who ran away and escaped with David. And a betrayal by a city 
a border town that David rescued from the incursion of Amorites. As they were being attacked, he brought his 600 men. He saved the day. He stopped to rest in the city. And when the city heard about Saul and what Saul was doing, pursuing David, the city told Saul, we'll give David to you if you come here. And so David had to flee into the wilderness. And yet David says, in this psalm he wrote after those events, O God, save me by your name and vindicate me by your might. O God, hear my prayer, give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen against me, ruthless men seek my life. They do not set God before themselves. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. And so David, in his, in his betrayals, in his disappearance into the wilderness, in his time of crisis and need, he says, God save me by your name. You see, because David understood that God's name is true and it has power. And it does what his name means. So what is Jesus? What is his name? Well, Jesus itself is Joshua or Yeshua in the Hebrew. And it means he saves. Because we have a Jesus who saves. And Jesus is God. So when, when David says, oh God, save me by your name, he's just telling Jesus, he's telling God to just do what God's name says he does, he saves. Or you could run through other names of Jesus. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. You know, you can continue with other names. Emmanuel, the God who is with us. Or Love, right? That is another name for Christ. Or The Way, The Truth, The Life. All names for Jesus, all realities of who God is, but also how God acts. Because there really is no separating God from his actions. God is love. God is the one who looks out for our interests and does what is right so that we might live with him. Jesus is the tree of life. Jesus is life. When he rises from the dead, not only does he show that he is life because death can't make him dead because he's life, but he's also the Lord who acts to give life to dirt, to give life to dead flesh, to give life to you and me. And when David flees into the wilderness because he's been betrayed three times, the God of armies, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, he watches over David. He saves David. Not only does he save him to eternal life, but he saves David to his other promises. And God, by his name, had given David a promise. When Samuel came and poured oil upon David's head, when he was anointed to be the next king of Israel after Saul, God had put his name upon David. He put his name of Israel upon him, of the one who struggles with God, but with whom God dwells. He put his name of child upon David as his heir to his kingdom. And he put his name of prince upon David. Because God gave to David a piece of his authority to watch over the people of Israel. And so when we call upon the name of the Lord, it's not like when we say a human name and it has meaning or it doesn't have meaning. So my name, Mark. People call upon it. Hey, Mark. Yes. Well, that doesn't mean they're saying to me, hey, warlike one, which is what my name means. No, they're saying, hey, Mark, person who I know of, who I have history with, or who um, has identified himself and been identified from birth as Mark. But I don't have the characteristics of Mark. But when a person calls upon me and says, hey, pastor, that's a different matter entirely. 
You see, that name was put upon me by God. It was put upon me in my ordination and installation. It means shepherd. And since God's name has meaning, and he placed his name upon me in baptism, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and made me a Christian, and then in ordination he placed his name upon me again, his name which has meaning, and made me pastor and minister. Since that name is given to me by God, it has significance. It has meaning. It means that when someone says, hey, pastor, they are expecting, and as long as I am not sinning, they will receive Jesus. They're expecting me to respond with the love that Christ has given me, to respond as the representative, as the ambassador of Jesus in the public setting to this congregation, in my case, two congregations, the one who then deals out the gifts of God. When my children say, hey, Father, well, again, that name was put upon me by God. When my wife gave birth to my two sons, and before that, when I married my wife and gained my three daughters, I became husband, and that has meaning, and I became father, and that has great significance. And so when the children call me father, their expectation is I'm going to look out for their interests as God does. I'm going to try to do what is best for them as God does. I'm going to live out their love as God does. Or when my wife calls me husband, that has meaning. God gave it meaning in our marriage. I'm going to love, cherish, and honor her. I'm going to try to give her a good life. And I'm going to be there for her in sickness and in health till death do us part. The name given to us has meaning. It directs us in how we act, just as the name of Christ has ultimate perfect meaning. And so we look at the way of the Lord. David, who was rescued by God, looks at the way of the Lord and he says, by your name rescue me, and God does rescue him. None of the three betrayals that, he, that happened before this psalm caused his destruction. None of the three betrayals kept him from having the promises of God fulfilled. And he became king of Israel. And so it goes on in the psalm, He will return the evil to my enemies, and your faithfulness put an end to them. It happened after a while for those who had betrayed David, but it did happen. God punished them. Saul would die by the sword, actually falling on his own. The traitor who killed the priests would himself get killed. And the town which turned its back upon its rescuer was eventually slaughtered. And so God eventually puts his punishment according to his righteousness. Because that's another name for God. He is justice. He is the God of righteousness. And either the punishment falls upon those who deserve it or the punishment falls upon life. It falls upon Jesus. Either way, the punishment will occur. It just happens at a different time than we expect. So David goes on, With a free will offering I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good. A free will offering, an offering given not out of a law, not out of necessity, not because I have sinned, and I must come before the Lord and beg his forgiveness. But an offering given out of pleasure and joy, because I want to offer something to God, to think about him, and to say thank you to him, and I want to share it with those around, because after a free will offering is given, a party happens. The stuff put into the offering, you don't get to take it home and store it up or use it as a business expense. No, that stuff is now depleted. It's depleted by bringing in people and eating it having a great party, enjoying in the Lord. So David is rescued from his betrayal by the name of God, which does what God does. 
And because of that, he wants to say thank you, and he does. And because of that, he gives joy to his 600 men and himself as they share in the gifts of God that are used for that thank you. Final verse says, For he has delivered me from every trouble, and my eye has looked in triumph on my enemies. Because in the past, God's name did what God's name said it would do. So in the present, I might not yet see the deliverance, but it's coming. And it doesn't matter who it is. It is every enemy. Because he is named God of God, King of King, Lord of Lords. He is the ultimate authority. And what he says happens. And so I give thanks. I share my joy with others. Because the name of God has made certain that I will become what God has named me to be, a Christian child heir to the kingdom. And those who turn their back on God, what God's name says will happen to them too. We have that same name and that same promise. We may not be kings in the present material world, though I would propose to you that you often live like one here in the United States due to the wonder of what the gifts God has given us. But here in the material world, we do receive God's blessing. He does put his name upon us so that we act like Christ, giving love, giving out life, giving out forgiveness things which God's name does, and now our name, Christian, little Christ, does. And as we live out that life here, we give our free offerings and share them with friends and family, and in that joy we see the activity of our Lord, and so finally we are delivered in triumph. So are our friends and family. And so are others who see us being loved to them for they will know you are Christians by your love. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll continue with the prayer of the church. Our Father, I'm sorry, that's the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, be with Irma and Joe, Gary and Margie as she's having troubles and had to go back to the hospital. Marcel, Abby, Johnny, Pat, Delpha, and Bruce. Lord, bless Helen, Rick, John, Bev, Marie, Richard, Bev, Debbie, Eli, Edward, Wendell, and Neil. Put your name upon them, for we know that your name means he saves. We know that your name Christ means the anointed one who does the task that God has given and we know that the ones who are saved are us, and the task God gave you is to die and rise again so that we might have a new name put upon us. Fathers, children, Christians, those who share the love of Christ and who live the love of Christ in our community. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we speak to our nation. There is a lot of difficulty and turmoil occurring we look at the news, we, we see chaos and not order. Lord, if it is your will, bring more order out of that chaos. Make this a peaceful place where we can live our lives in love as Christians, doing the things that our name has been given to us to do. Hear our prayer. O great and mighty counselor, the one who lives with us, we pray that you bless our leaders, our church, our doctors, our emergency workers, and our families. And you make them places where you dwell, where your name is known. And people call upon your name in expectation that you will do the things that your name says you will do. Lord, help our unbelief so that we might be a strong church which acts as a stranger in the community, but a stranger who attracts others to learn that we're not strangers to them and we're not strangers to you, so that those others too might receive your great gifts and glory. All this we pray in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit's names. 
Amen. We are going to continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We're going to continue with our hymn of thanks, which is hymn 725, Father, Children of the Heavenly Father. Children of the Heavenly Father, safely in his bosom gather, nestling bird nor star in heaven, such a refuge e'er was given. God his own doth tend and nourish, in his holy courts they flourish, from all evil things he spares them, in his mighty arms he bears them. Neither life nor death shall ever from the Lord his children sever. Unto them his grace he showeth, and their sorrows all he knoweth. Though he giveth or he taketh, God his children ne'er forsaketh. Tis the loving purpose solely to preserve them pure and holy. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We will close with hymn 643, sent forth by God's blessing. Sent forth by God's blessing, our true faith confessing, the people of God from his dwelling take leave. The supper is ended, oh, now be extended the fruits of this service in all who believe. The seed of his teaching, receptive souls reaching, shall blossom in action for God and for all. His grace did invite us, his love shall unite us to work for God's kingdom and answer his call. With praise and thanksgiving to God ever living, the tasks of our everyday life we will face, our faith ever sharing, in love ever caring, embracing his children of each tribe and race. With your feast now feed us, with your light now lead us, Unite us as one in this life that we share. Then may all the living with praise and thanksgiving give honor to Christ and his name that we bear. May Christ place his name upon you, and you go forth and live up to that name. Amen.